after that fish for what feels like months, it must be months. I've seen it probably four or five times and it's a wily, wily groper. I've seen it with Elena, I've seen it with Stefan, I've seen it with Andre and I've seen it by myself two or three times as well. I definitely had to get lucky but I also had to hunt it fairly well. I knew roughly where it was hanging out so I had to anchor the boat away, come in around the other side, come down and I didn't get it the first time, uh, it was too far away. But I managed to sneak over off after it and turn around and just started looking at me like, come on mate, what are you going to do? <laughs> Having laid a plan, that's probably why I was, I was happy. I had a plan in my head, I executed it, it didn't go perfectly, but I ended up with a fish. So there you go, that's, that's why I was happy, because I had a plan, I didn't just stumble across the fish. That's lunch. <laughs> I was uh, contacted by a friend of mine and also a girl who I met in Miami through a friend of a friend and they're both spear fishermen, free divers, they're both on a yacht over here and I'm going to sail north of here about 30 miles uh, to the Berry Islands and go and drop in and say g'day. going to leave this anchorage, I've been here for about three days now basically just reading books. So I've been listening to Yuval Noah Harari's book 21 Lessons for the 21st Century like all day long. I wanted to play some audio from that book because um, it's very relevant to our situation at the moment because Elena and I are having a kid and it really got me thinking. But first of all, I need to go and check on these sails. So to set the scene, he's been talking about AI, algorithms, the future of education, and it's sort of his advice to a 15-year-old boy. So, the best advice I can give a 15-year-old stuck in an outdated school somewhere in Mexico, India, or Alabama is don't rely on the adults too much. And so this got me thinking about my little man and homeschooling, online education, and like the rapid pace that the world is changing at. How's your school system? Can you recommend any good online education. Anyway, I've been I've been right into that book today. It's been really, really good. Oh, a dude swam out to the boat yesterday. Have I spoken to you about that? No, that's really funny. That must have been a, f a fair way. Oh, yeah. It's like so far. <laughs> so, I hope you invited him on board and gave him like a coffee and stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course. The jet lag's already real. So how long do you think you're awake for, Alona? I counted because the flight was 32 hours total, but it was at night time, so I also didn't sleep for that entire day in Miami because I was up at 5 a.m. So it was more, it was like 50 hours without sleep or longer. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh. Yeah, like it was really you didn't sleep or is this like one of those things? Raz, I promise you. you I promise he was moving around so much the whole trip. Part of the reason why I couldn't sleep, he was just like right under my belly button. And there was like limbs sticking out everywhere. I downloaded heaps of books. Awesome. Well, geez, you're going to yeah. need them. Seven hours of audio books yesterday. That's, that's a lot. You're going to be like super recharged by the time you come back here. Yeah. And I need it more often, babe. I've got to be honest. Yeah, no, it's so, so important. All right, Booktown. I'll chat to you soon. No worries. Love you, pants. I love you too. Have a good day. Will do. Have fun. Coming up to our location here, to Devil's Key Cut, I'm going to tighten up on the head sail, spin around into the wind, knock off the main sheet so that I can drop the main sail, then turn back around and start going in towards the cut with just the head sail. It's not super rough, but it's fairly rough, so the pass is going to be 
difficult to navigate, but it's the top of the tide, so there's no current coming in or out, which would cause waves against the current coming out and it would be a disaster. So. I've also got my phone as a secondary navigation. There's some reef just there, there's an island there. Everything looks like it's checking out. These waves are not as ferocious as I thought. I'm gonna get up there and navigate. So we've just got the last of the swell coming in here. Now we are inside and everything looks good. We did it, you and me. The tide is still coming in pretty fast. <laughs> 2.8 meters and we're right on the mark. Check out how close that is though. I arrived in the Berry Islands to meet up with David, the French sailor, Valentin, the Quebecian fisherwoman extraordinaire who I had actually met in Florida several months prior. And of course, Joe, the American, whose accent I cannot think of to do right now. Please, come on board. How are you going? Hey, how are you? Excellent. Check out the size of this friggin' lobster I got. That is massive. So yeah, everyone's coming over here for dinner tonight and I just cracked a bottle of wine and I'm not lonely anymore. So that's good. Valentine, that's really you funny. are an absolute wizard. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, 10 out of 10 uh, for presentation. The monster's not there yet. Yeah, you have the master. This is the legs yeah. from the yeah. monster, though. No, the, the, you didn't cook the monster, did you? Only or the, you did? The legs, it's only the legs. No, we have the baby monster. Oh, okay. We yeah. cooked the queen, not the king. Uh. <laughs> have a feeling we're gonna get super blue. You need some help? Here. Ah. I'll just take that one. Ah, right ah, there. Ah, what? Ah, <laughs> ah. Let, me, let me do this one. 